Hey, badass business owners, you have probably heard of this term ROI, which stands for return on investment. And you are wondering if you need to know what the heck this is. The answer is yes. In this video, we're going to explain to you what is ROI and why you need to know how to calculate it. And of course, we're going to walk you through and teach you how to do the actual calculation. So if you're ready, let's dive in. Now, in order to understand the calculation, you need to have a basic understanding of what ROI actually is. ROI stands for return on investment. Basically, this is how much profit you will make on the money you invest. And typically, you hear this term used when people are discussing the stock market, flipping or investing in houses, and investments in general. These folks are investing cash in hopes of creating even more money in return. For example, if someone invests $10,000 in the stock market, they are attempting to get a return on their money. When they pull their money back out, they hope to make a profit on this money. So they might be looking at a 10% return, a 25% return, or even more. Basically, they want to turn the $10,000 into, say, $15,000, thus making a $5,000 profit, which in turn would get them a 50% return on their money, or ROI. However, for you, the small business owner, you aren't necessarily buying stock or property, but you are investing money into your business at various times in hopes that it will also give you a return on your money. For example, if you purchase a $250 piece of equipment, you are hoping that this piece of equipment will help you increase your sales, which in turn will help you earn more profit in your business. You are hoping that this $250 item will lead to hundreds of dollars in sales, but do you actually know the ROI on this investment? Or maybe you want to do a $1,000 advertising campaign with a local company. It sounds like a great idea, but how do you know what your ROI is going to be? How much do you even need to make on this advertising investment to get your money back, or what we call break even? Hint, it isn't $1,000 in new sales. Now keep in mind, not all of your small business investments are to create sales. Sometimes you will invest in a piece of equipment, software, or even employees to also buy you more time. And by the way, you heard me right. Your employees should also have a return on investment, but more on that later. Your ultimate goal of all money you spend in the business should lead to more sales and more profits. Our goal today is to help you calculate out what that return should look like. Now, something I need you to keep in mind, when you are talking about ROI in your small business, you are really wanting to know two key things. A, how much profit you expect this purchase or investment to create, and B, how much do you need to sell to at least break even, basically get your money back on this financial investment. I'm going to show you the calculation, and then we're going to take a look at a few examples. To calculate out the ROI, it looks something like this. We take the total profit that you created, and then subtract the initial investment you made. This gives us the profit you actually made. We then take that number and divide it by the initial investment. And since we want to have a percentage, we then will multiply that by 100%. Now I know this can be confusing, but we're gonna use some examples to help you out. Now also notice that I didn't say sales. Sales are not profit. We want to know how much you make after your costs and expenses. This formula on the screen will look familiar to those that follow the channel. Now let's go back to that $250 piece of equipment you want to purchase. When looking at our calculation, we know the initial investment is the $250. But what are the profits we make from this purchase? Let's say this particular piece of equipment allows you to provide a service that you will sell for $175. The cost of goods for the service are $80. That will cover two hours of labor plus the parts. And you also know you need to set aside 25% for your other expenses in your business, which means that you need to set aside $43.75. When you plug it in to our favorite calculation of sales minus cost of goods minus expenses equals profits, then we know that we are looking at a potential profit of $51.25. For those of you that are new to the channel, I discuss this calculation plus how to figure out your expenses and all your other business numbers in our other videos. So please make sure that you hit that subscribe button so you can check out the videos, but I'll also put some in the show notes to help you get going. Now back to our ROI calculation. As you remember, we want to know how long it will take for you to make back your initial investment and at least break even. 
Well, if the cost of the equipment is $250 and our profit on just one service is $51.25, it is safe to say that if we take the $250 and divide it by the $51.25, we now know that we need at minimum to create five jobs with this profit amount to at least get our money back. But we want to know what the potential return on the investment will be for this purchase. Let's say the item should last for at least 50 jobs before it breaks down or needs to be replaced. We can assume these 50 jobs at that same $51.25 in profit could potentially lead to $2,562.50 in profits. Now let's go grab our ROI calculation and see what our potential ROI will be. You might recall that we take the profits made and subtract the initial investment. So we would take the $2,562.50, subtract the $250, which gives us a profit of $2,312.50. We then divide that amount by the original amount invested. So the $23,12.50 divided by the $250, we come up with 9.25. And since we want to know the percentage, we multiply this by 100%. So this tells us that our ROI would be a 925% return. That is awesome. That is a great return on your cash. However, not all returns will be this good. For example, let's say you want to spend $2,000 on a fancy gadget that allows you to help folks you can't help today. Now, you don't expect to use it all of the time, but there might be a customer a month that you can help out. They aren't the highest paying jobs, but you do make a healthy $125 in profit each time you use it. And if you do one a month, you would have 12 jobs at $125 in profits for a total of $1,500. You don't need a fancy calculation to tell you that the $1,500 will not be a good return on your $2,000 investment. You will not even get your money back for over a year. But let's plug in the numbers. We take our profit of $1,500 and subtract our initial investment of $2,000 and we get a negative $500. We then take that negative $500 and divide it by our initial $2,000 investment and it turns out that we have a negative 0.25. Multiply it by the 100% so we can get our percentage and now we see that after a year we have a negative 25% loss on our money. It will take 14 months to just get our money back. I'm going to assume that you could find a bunch of other ways to invest this $2,000 in your business and it will have a much better return for you. Let's take a look at an advertising campaign. A local person comes to you with this amazing opportunity to get you in front of thousands of households for just $500 a month. They would love to sign you up for a year, but does this make sense? What will you want your ROI, your return on investment, to look like? Once again, I recommend running the basic numbers first. For advertising ROI, I also recommend asking yourself, what are you trying to accomplish? Are you trying to get new customers? Are you trying to sell a specific product or service? Whatever you do, don't be generic. Have a plan of what it is you plan to accomplish. Let's just say that you want to push a particular product or service that your estimated profit will be $25. Since you know that your cost for the advertising will be $500 and you know that each customer the advertising creates would be worth at least $25 in profits, then you can calculate $500 divided by that $25 means you need at least 20 new customers each month to break even or to get your money back. But let's be honest, you aren't going to spend $500 a month just to break even. You want to make more money. But at least now you know you need a minimum of 20 people to make it worth it. What if this amazing advertising created 50 new customers a month? What would that ROI look like? Since we know that each customer is worth $25 in profits, we can take the 50 customers times the $25 and we know the potential profit would be $12.50. And using our ROI calculation, we would take that profit of $12.50 and subtract our initial investment of $500. And that gives us $7.50. We then divide it by the $500 investment and we get 1.5 times it by 100% and it turns out we get 150% return our investment. Not too bad. Now let me pause for a second. I know the numbers can be overwhelming, but here is the main reason you want to know ROI and how to figure it out. You need to ask yourself these important questions before you spend money in your business. How much do you need to sell in order to at least get your initial investment back? And then ask yourself, how much money can you realistically make after you recoup your initial investment? In our advertising example, if it isn't realistic to at least get 20 new customers, then is this the great opportunity that they say it is? ask more questions. How will they make sure that you are getting the number of customers you need to get this return on your investment? If a company will not help you with your numbers, then it's not worth you working with them. 
They need to be just as invested on you getting a return on your money as you are. Every dollar you spend in your business needs to make sure that you are making money or you are saving time. By learning what your ROI is and how to calculate it, this will help you spend your business money wisely. Now let's take a look at one more example of ROI and that is for hiring a new employee. This is Tom. You want to hire Tom to work about 25 hours a week in your business. You plan to pay him $15 an hour. So that is 25 hours times $15 or $375 a week. To keep this simple, we will leave out all the other costs of having an employee like payroll taxes, insurance, etc. But you could toss that in as well. But we want to keep this nice and simple, so we will just use his hourly wages. Based on everything we have discussed so far, you know that your business needs to create an extra $375 in profits just to break even to get your money back on this investment in Tom. Yes, Tom is an investment that you're hoping to get a return on. Your employees all come with an ROI. After all, you are in the business of making money. So let's calculate out the potential ROI of adding Tom to the team. You plan to do at least 10 extra jobs a week with Tom on board. Each job has a potential to earn your business $50 more in profit. So we now know that 10 new jobs at $50 more in profit is $500 in new profit each week. Let's grab our ROI calculation and plug in our investment in Tom. Our new profits are $500 minus the initial $375 we are paying for Tom for a net profit of $125. We then take the $125 and divide it by the initial investment of the $375 and we get 0.333. Times it by 100% and we now know that our investment in Tom has a 33% return. Not too bad. Not fantastic, but not too bad. However, if these new jobs only create $25 in profits, our outcome is completely different. 10 jobs times $25 is $250 in new weekly profits. Minus our initial investment in Tom of $375, we have a loss of $125. This loss of $125 divided by our $375 investment in Tom means that we now have a negative 0.333. Times it by the 100% and we find out that we have a negative 33% return on hiring Tom. Can you see why it's important to plug in your numbers to see if it's wise to hire a new employee? ROI is a crucial tool in your small business. It can make the difference between you making money and you losing money. So hopefully going forward, you will start calculating out your ROI to make sure that it is a wise investment. And if you want to learn even more about your business numbers, then check out this playlist, which will have a bunch of videos to help you make even more profit in your small business.